Now, I'm doing some chips. Now you take the knife when you're cutting the chips, slice the potato with a flat edge usually on the bottom so that it stabilizes it. And to get through all the potato without sliding is quite tricky, especially when they're late. You've got to press the liquid out from the slices. Now take the knife, find the work surface with the tip, then just lower the back. Now I take the smaller ones and put them in a bit second. I like to dry them a bit and do them in advance. So, like so. And then you've got the gap here, the, the knife won't go in any other direction, so you've got nice evenly cut chips. He said, I made that one a bit slanty. Now if you do this gently till you find the board and then you can just go wallop. Now, yeah, like I say, I like to separate them in the sieve a bit. Now you do need your chip fat rather hot. See it's starting to smoke. Not so good, but because I'm doing a lot of chips, I don't mind. I've got mine about almost four. When they're in, I'll turn it up a tad. But it is good to have them nice and hot so that they sizzle really well. Now, I'm just going to do the rest. Put those little ones to the side and go in as it is. Now how to put them in without burning yourself, tilt the pan and put them away from you. And once they're in, woo, keep them moving the whole time, all the time, don't let them stop moving, they stick together. I'm using white potatoes, they seem to be the best. And a metal spatula, so the potatoes are cooked when that frothy, the oil is not so frothy and you can actually see through it, around the edges a bit. You don't want them, you don't want them browned, just done nicely. So, you keep them moving all the time. To begin with, you don't have to be so gentle. But once they start cooking, tip them up from the bottom. The pan has browned some of the bottoms already, you see. You keep the pan moving, careful you don't do it too much and the, splash the hot oil onto your hand. Now, and keep turning the ones off at the bottom. Separating any that you can see are stuck together. They do get rather sticky. Hotter the oil the better. And you need a certain amount of room in the pan, really, so that they don't all stick together too much, too badly. Now they're starting to soften, so I've got to be careful I don't agitate them too much. And then break them, end up with a big ball of mush, which I've done on some occasions, and reduce the amount of chips I ended up being able to eat. It also really naffed up the oil, which I tend to pour back in my jar. So I use a jar, and you can pour the oil out of the pan really gently so that any tiny bits stay in the bottom of the pan. And you can reuse your oil uh, because you will have to add more oil each time you cook, because of course the potatoes will absorb quite a bit. Don't turn the heat down and let the pan cool with the chips in they will absorb even more oil, I do believe. Um, and pretty much, they always kind of go soggy. Once you've taken them out, they will soften. It's very difficult to get completely crisped potatoes. I don't know how they do that in Miss Millie's, etc. Probably with a processed potato substance that's reformed into chips, by the look of it. I don't think they're cut chips. I think they're squeezed, I'm not sure, through a little aperture. Anyway, now you can see the froth is starting to reduce, and they're almost done. They also don't, they're not sticking together as much anymore. So at this point you could, if you were doing hot dogs with them, or fish fingers, or, I mean fish fingers, they only take three or four minutes to cook really. I'm eating them here with some soup that I made yesterday. 
Oh, let's not forget the little ones. Now I'll add them in a gap at the edge, put them in and swish the oil around so that the hot oil gets to them. Perfect. The thin ones will of course cook a lot quicker so they don't really need the same length of time as the rest of the chips do. Now they're starting to brown so they, they really could only want to be in there for another two minutes or so. Um, so I hope you've got the rest of your accompanying dish together with your chips or that you haven't done it too soon and then that your hot dog etc has gone cold. Timing's essential to get all the ingredients out together or hot on the plate. There we go. And you still see there's a, still a bit of froth so the oil still has to clear a bit before you can count them ready. And they are starting to brown nicely you see. I mean you could consider them done at this point. Uh, in fact, it's probably wise. You can see now that most of the froth is gone, which would be the moisture and the starch element that has now obviously dried off. And there you have it, chips. Like I say, I'm eating mine with soup that I've made. Mmm, it's carrot, which I roasted in the oven, chopped up and put into the pan then with hot water, some tomato puree. Cayenne pepper, of course, salt, and I did add a sweet potato. Now, see these chips are now done. So what you can do is turn the heat down, obviously don't turn it right down. If you get distracted, they'll go all soggy and horrendously greasy. And see the little ones, they're all right. They're edible, they're done now as well. So I do like my chips kind of crunchy, so I do leave them a little bit too long. So I don't mind doing that while I give the soup, which is already steaming, a good blast. Here's a bowl that I like to use. Um, it does need a bit of warming. I need another bowl or plate for the chips. Now, to drain the chips, I like to use a plate under the sieve. Now, once the chips are out, try and get them stacked together. Now, take a certain amount, tilt them. Just keep them moving, because as long as you move them, the oil is coming away from the chip. If you don't do that, you tend to have more oil in the chip. Now the other chips are still cooking, so you can do take your time here. And just kind of lift them off of the spatula a bit. And then just wallop them in the sieve. And squeeze the ones on that are going to drop back in the oil. Oh look, one chip broken. So, we just give them a little tickle here and there. Let the oil come away from them. It's quite important. Now we can turn the heat off. Don't need any more heat in there. Obviously global warming, etc. And obviously your bills. Um, always turn your... Uh, toaster oh, from the wall. Over the year apparently it will cost you £30 just for having a short length automatic electric toaster plugged in. And that £30, you know, that's grandma's Christmas present um, or you know, a nice bottle of whiskey or something. You know, who wouldn't want a nice bottle of whiskey? All you've got to do, every time you use the kettle, turn it off at the wall. Turn everything off in your living room at the wall at night so that all of your cables 
extensions, etc. do not have a residual voltage which dissipates, hence without any devices actually running, if they're plugged in and turned on at the wall, you can notice the electricity meter still clocking and registering uh, a cost, you know. And there we have it. I have all my chips out just in time. See, they've got nice and brown. They'll be crunchy as you like. Can't get better than that. Keep separating them a bit, draining off the oil. It's another thing, you don't really want to be eating that oil particularly. And I'm going to be using this oil again. As you can see. It's fairly nice and clear oil. Now there's a few bits in there, you see. Now what I like to do is put the chips on the hot pan there, so the heat is keeping the chips warm and any fat that may be dripping off going back into the pan. We can get rid of that. This is the potato peeler I use. I'll just show you on a potato. They're so much quicker than any other type. It's called a speed peeler for that reason, I presume. Now I like to just take them off. They can cause a bit of trouble and catch on your Speed peeler. Now here it is, peeling a potato. Yeah. Oh. They do kind of tend to get caught in the thing. And then you just, you know, what could be quicker? I've not been in the army. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then we have one peeled potato. You can take these out like this, any bits like that, you can just attack from either side. One potato peeled. Couldn't be quicker. Always tidy up as you go. And there we have it. Ooh, lovely chips. And soup. Thank you for watching. My name's Tim. Enjoy your chips.